ക്രിസ് കോഴിക്കോടിന്റെ വൺ ഓഫ് ദ ഓർഗനൈസർ ആണ് ഞാനിപ്പോ ആക്ച്വലി ഫ്രീലാൻസർ ഡിജിറ്റൽ മാർക്കറ്റിംഗ് ചെയ്യാണ് ഗ്രോത്ത് മാർക്കറ്റിംഗ് ഓട്ടോമേഷൻ ചാറ്റ് ബോർഡ് അങ്ങനത്തെ കാര്യങ്ങളാണ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് അപ്പോ എ ഐ ഇപ്പൊ ഇങ്ങനെ ഭൂമി ചെയ്തോണ്ടിരിക്കുന്ന ഒരു ഒരു ഹോട്ട് ടോപ്പിക് ആണല്ലോ അപ്പൊ അതിന്റെ ഒരു പൊട്ടൻഷ്യൽ അതേപോലെ നമുക്ക് നമ്മുടെ പ്രൊഡക്ടിവിറ്റി കൂട്ടാൻ പറ്റുന്ന ഒരു ടൂൾസ് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ അത് എങ്ങനെ നമ്മുടെ ഒരു പ്രൊജക്ട്സ് ആയിട്ട് ഇന്റഗ്രേറ്റ് ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റും അങ്ങനത്തെ കുറച്ച് കാര്യങ്ങളാണ് ഞാൻ അറിയാൻ വേണ്ടിട്ട് ആഗ്രഹിക്കുന്നു you know how many of you are from uh, tamil nadu yeah actually kavir is here yeah from tamil nadu shakti is from tamil nadu okay great so looks like a, a lot of uh, uh, people outside of kerala has also dialed in today yes yes yeah. great okay and we also have some ladies here i hope i mean i I think the uh, you know the ladies here are of the de- developer community as well on WordPress. Preeta, Prashita, I hope. I uh, actually I'm working as a digital marketing analyst. Okay. Um I was I was working in Ernakulam but then recently I moved abroad so I'm looking forward to new aspects of AI and how we can use AI to Um, develop ourselves and our work. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Where, mm-hmm. where are you dialing in from? Um, from Malaysia. Right Malaysia. Now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Salam at the tongue. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know Malay language. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Bigul has been in Malaysia recently and uh, you know we both are big lovers of uh, Nasi Lemak. Um, and laksa. <laughs> I love Kerala food. I don't like Malaysian food. Oh man. <laughs> yeah but in malaysia you will not feel any difficulty especially in kolam yeah yeah, uh, yeah yes. a lot of indian restaurants uh, especially yeah. if you are a vegetarian uh, you will <laughs> yeah, it will not be a problem for you that's <laughs> good nice okay and uh, yeah preeta would you like to introduce yourself hello my name is preeta actually i'm younger sister of prasita ah okay okay <laughs> you are from malaysia too no 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 i'm currently in kerala itself okay nan beta complete edu computer science aayirunnu okay so ippa ma bijs la work cheyondirikkana kolikkod ah avu veet irunnane work from home okay 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 അപ്പൊ ചേച്ചിലും കഴിച്ചെന്നു എന്നെ പറ്റിയാന്ന് പറഞ്ഞു അങ്ങനെ ഇപ്പം ജസ്റ്റ് കേറിയ Hi, you know you know me we have we both from cafix community oh yeah of course of course yeah, I, i was <laughs> wondering Digil. the same project yeah 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 uh, actually i am first time in attend this uh, this wordpress community meeting ah, so okay. actually i don't know what was the, what is the today's agenda just when i you know joined the meeting i just ke uh, okay, uh, you know uh, just to show you uh, oh okay okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Yes. awesome okay awesome. okay anyway Surprise It's great to meet you again. You are still in yeah. Canada or in Kerala? No. Uh, I'm I'm in Chennai right now. I came Chennai back right to Canada last uh, last month. Oh, okay, okay. No, you are not coming in Calicut, you know. No. I was I was in Calicut. I went, I met Bigul and Sajit and uh, you know oh, my, really? my my team. Just okay. that uh, the cafe meeting, the breakfast meeting in cafe they got postponed. So otherwise oh. I, would have, I would have joined the breakfast meeting because oh. uh, the, the tour was happening. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So I missed it. I missed both the tour and the breakfast meeting this time. Okay, okay. <laughs> anyway, nice to meet you again. Oh yeah, nice to meet you too, yeah. Prajush. Yeah, thank you. Somebody has raised the hand. Uh, please, I missed the name. Uh, please stop. Uh, please carry on.
Uh, Sajid, uh, do you think it's possible to record once the session begins? Yeah, yeah sure. OK, awesome. Uh, if anybody, uh, anyone else want to talk or share anything, uh, please. Uh, otherwise, we can start in a couple of minutes. Yes. We can start by 6.10. Yeah, hi all. I mean, let me give an intro. Right? So I'm kind of an emerging founder and uh, and a graduate from IIT Roorkee on statistical AI on BFS side of thing. So I'm just trying to explore on generative AI and how we can leverage in my startup. Okay. Because I'm doing a startup in my Coimbatore. Okay, okay, that's great. That's great. And uh, I'm new to this community and uh, I'm trying to do a hiring on both hiring and exploring and networking. Okay, Coimbatore has a very vibrant uh, startup community. Uh, there is the EO entrepreneurs organization, and there's so many other you know uh, networks. I have at least a dozen entrepreneurial friends in Coimbatore. So, and uh, it has been only from the recent years, right? Ten years right. back, when I actually wanted to settle in Coimbatore, there's not even hard good companies to actually join. Only very few. I know, I know. The past five years, years, it has, it has, uh, you know, even Calicut for that matter, you know, like all the co-working spaces in Calicut are now full. Like there is a, there is a waiting period for any co-working space in Calicut to uh, enroll. You know, so it's just, uh, it's just so nice to see. Yeah, nice to see you. I think we can start. Oh, yeah, we can start. Uh, and we can sh we share the recording um, later to the group. So let's start. Okay. All right. So yeah, nice to meet you all. My name is Radha Krishnan. I am um, I am uh, fondly known as RK among my uh, friends and family. And uh, I'm from Code. Um, and, you know, I speak Telugu at home. I also speak, I think, seven languages at this point. <laughs> Studied in Gujarati school in, in, in the beach, uh, beach road. And, uh, you know, married to uh, a Tamil speaking Telugite. And I'm a Malayalam speaking Telugite as well. And, uh, yeah, uh, after my schooling in in Calicut, I also have stayed in Coimbatore, uh, a small town called Pollachi. Uh, that's where I did my higher secondary and then went on to do my B.Tech in biotechnology in Bangalore. And I also did my diploma in human resource management. And currently, I am doing my doctorate in uh, exponential business models post COVID. So that is my thesis I'm working on. And uh, I enrolled in um, a university in Geneva called the Swiss School of Business Management. So that is a quick intro about me. Um, I've started you know, my company, Web Namaste. Uh, it's a marketing agency in Bangalore in 2008. That is during the recession. And <laughs> it's been such a journey I cannot exp express in my, you know, in, in, in such a small time that I have for intro. But it really has been one of uh, my biggest pivotal moment in my life to quit my job and start my own startup uh, more than 15 years ago. And before I started my company, uh, I was also freelancing. I was writing and be, doing some SEO and backlinks and stuff like that. And uh, then in recession, I thought it was the right time to quit and uh, start my own company because uh, I was uh, generating more income uh, in my freelancing than my day job. So I figured that it was the right time to you know, start focusing full time. And it's been a journey. And one fun fact about me is that I've traveled to more than 30 countries before I turned 30 years of age. So I'm right now I'm 37. 
Um, so that's a little bit of a fun fact. And I'm married. Uh, I have two kids. Uh, the youngest one is uh, a year and a half, and uh, the eldest one is four. So yeah, that's all about me. And uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to share some of my learnings and also learn some stuff from everybody in this group as well. So I want this to be a little more interactive and not just you know, one-on-one. -on -one. So for that matter, uh, I also would request whoever can uh, to turn on your video. Uh, thank you, Branzi. <laughs> Branzel. Yeah, thank you, Branzel. And uh, also, you know, anyone who can turn on the videos, because as it is, uh, it's it's difficult to speak on, uh, you know, online without any preparation. <laughs> uh, at least I can actually see your faces and kind of gauge the interest levels and are you able to understand what I'm saying and kind of curiosity. It, it's, it's just, uh, it just makes a lot of difference when I'm able to see people. Uh, yeah, people's faces when I'm speaking. So, no, uh, I mean, it's it's just a request, no obligation, but let's just get started. So, guys, uh, AI is, you know, it's it's no longer future, right? It's, it's, it's right now, it's happening. It is not a world where a computer just understands what you ask, but the AI can also understand what you mean. You know, it's no longer a science fiction. It's a reality. So uh, generative AI is the topic uh, for today. And then it's a subset of artificial intelligence. And uh, it can create content, whether it is uh, text, image, uh, or videos, audio, you name, you name it. There is a generative AI that has penetrated into all, con all kinds of content. Mm -hmm. Uh, creation and content editing, whatnot. So, uh, you know, it's like having a digital assistant, uh, which is not just reactive, but proactive, right? And uh, AI, in my experience, is a really good productivity tool, like Sajit mentioned. Uh, it's not a replacement for human intelligence. Uh, you still have to use your intellect to make the best of AI. And uh, it can help you reduce errors, save time, and even come up with ideas that you never thought of before. So, like I said, you know, it is just an assistant. It doesn't replace you. It's an assistant to anybody who wants to do great work. Uh, and the mantra of generative AI is, uh, you know, garbage in, garbage out. Which is, <laughs> if you if you and if you give it, uh, uh, you know, false information or incorrect information without content or context. The kind of output that you get is also pretty crappy. So, you know, so make sure that uh, when you enter any anything, the prompt or uh, the, the context or scenario, make sure that you're giving AI a lot of additional information so that it can generate what you want or, or what you need. Okay, so with that said, uh, you know, today the objective is to explore how you can leverage generative AI in your daily tasks. Okay, be it client communication, project management, or content creation. Okay, we'll look at uh, real world examples and even uh, you know do some dem demo. Like I can share my screen and show you some uh, behind the scenes on how I uh, use AI on day to day basis. So, like I said, you know, generative AI is a type of uh, AI that can generate new data that is similar but not identical to the data it was trained on. Okay, in other words. It creates content, which is text, images, videos, audios based on the patterns that it has already been trained on. Okay, And the good news is that you also can train it beyond what the creator has uh, trained it on. Uh, for example, uh, ChatGPT by OpenAI is only trained until, I think, uh, 2021, end of 2021 at this point. It does not know the war that's happening right now You know in between you know so many countries uh which is you know which is which is pathetic but that's for a different day uh you know so it does not know what is happening right now in the world unless you activate the search feature which you know it, it utilizes bing or some of the plugins also utilizes google to do a quick search to see the general context of today 
uh, and give you an output. So, and you can you can use it for text, images, videos, audios, and uh, you know why should you care about all that? Because it's not just the future; it's the present. Like I like I told you, uh, companies are already using it to automate a lot of tasks, generate a lot of content, even formulate strategies, and you know, what are the companies basically? There are those are you know humans behind the company who is making it all possible. So, uh, at the outset, let me just say and begin with this statement: AI is not going to replace you. It's it's a great assistant to anyone anyone who wants to do great work. So, uh, let me actually get started with uh, you know how I use it for my email responses. Okay. So instead of just uh, giving you, you know, Gyan, I want to actually show you how I actually use it. So let me actually share my screen. Entire screen, share, okay. Just give me a quick thumbs up once, you, once you're able to see my screen. All right, okay, so can you quick, uh, quickly tell me and like unmute yourself and say if you can see it? Yes, yeah, visible. Okay, awesome, great. So this is a client of mine. Okay, and uh, basically, you know, the, there has been a conversation thread here, and this is my uh, this is my Chat GPT account with email helper, which is you know like if you see, uh, I I have like a lot of the chat history. And each of them has like a, a specific purpose. The reason I do that is so so that it retains the context. For example, let's say I'm dealing with a client, and you know if it's a small client, it goes here. But if it's a dedicated client, I had I I kind of create a new chatbot for that. Okay, so what it does is it retains the history of all the context is already there. So this time when I come and say that. Uh, Chris friend responded. Okay. So let me just read this email. I don't know how my message went through. I deleted out sending it. I was confused by RK's email. However, I understand it now. I'm so sorry for the confusion. I want to follow RK's lead on this. He's a voice of experience. Please continue with the plan as he outlined. Again, thank you for your patience and trying to understand. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So I'm just going to copy. And paste. Okay. So that's the context. And now I'm going to say, okay, this friend responded to my email that outlines the funnel, the funnel strategy for GTL. Write an email response acknowledging. The below email and to get started with implementation from Monday. Ask Praveena to also commit to a deadline for the funnel launch. Got it? Are you clear, guys? On how I'm uh, how I'm using it. Okay, so what I did is I I wanted AI to tell me to to create a professional email, and also I'm giving them the context on what the email is. So when I click on enter, it is going to draft an email for me. So typically, you know, uh, the CEOs used to hire assistants, you know, to give them the context and ask them to respond. Now I'm just using an AI. So I don't have to wait for a day to send an email. So I can say, hey, Chris, no worries at all. We have those moments of confusion, especially when dealing with complex projects. OK, so now this is where humans come in, right? So we, I'm not going to use this <laughs> because this is an overkill. And I'm going to say, just start with this. So I'm just going to copy. and paste it here 
and I'm going to remove this. Proceed with the implementation of the funnel strategy. I'm not going to coordinate with Don, so it's, it's going to be we will. Okay, so here, see, she is not being marked. So I'm just going to say, I mean, yeah. Looking forward to making this happen. So I did my quick edits, and now it is ready to send. OK, guys, any other suggestions on how I can make this better? Maybe we can use a tool like Grammarly. <laughs> yeah, I can use the tool Grammarly. So this, do you see this? When I hover on it, it already corrected. Wait. OK, do you see this? OK, this is not Grammarly. Uh, I don't know. OK, so I'm already using Grammarly here. Do you see this here? On the, OK, so it's already there. So, OK. No, OK, I am not really looking forward. <laughs> That's a little OK. So I'm just going to not do that. Great, awesome. So I'm just going to send it. So this is an example of how I use AI to respond to emails. And let me also show you behind the scenes on some other application as well. So Steve is a client in Canada. And uh, you know I am uh, I'm their company's fractional CMO. So we are also, you know, like I'm strategizing building a funnel for their, uh, you know, enrollment system. Okay. And I asked them, it's been a while since I had a strategy alignment call with Steve and the folks at BBTI. Write an email to Steve inviting him for a quick alignment call to smash through the roadblocks and schedule a time for a deep dive strategy call for marketing objectives. I am back from all my family affairs and dedicating myself to work since last week. OK, so then this is the prompt. OK, that's it. But now it has given me like a complete professionally drafted email, which I copied and pasted and made some minimal changes to it, and it sent. And also, I wanted to send another update for the new course, you know, which is called Retirement Planning for Executives. And these are the final steps. And now it has created like you know, a beautiful looking one with subject line and everything. Of course, it says, feel free to make any additional changes before sending it out. OK, so this these are two examples of how I'm using it for the context of sending emails. All right, so just going to stop sharing my screen and ask you to see if it was helpful. And do you like to see more such content? Guys, just a quick pulse check. Was it helpful? Yeah, uh, one question for the question. All right. Okay, great. I'm mean, like, so for the simple use case, mm -hmm. I'm mean, like, uh, we type two lines of text to generate some three lines of text. So it's not that much compatible for two because we get the generated content and once again modify it. So right. we're talking, talking about like kind of a huge amounts of email. In terms yes. of thousands, it had to respond to customers. Correct. So an automation kind of a stuff. In those cases, sometimes we might to improve the output from the TA. Right? So is it possible? Yes. So yes. You, you need to do a little bit of a training. So when you start a chat, you uh, give give it the prompt saying that uh, I call it persona. So you tell them that okay, the mission for this chat thread is so that you can act as my uh, professional email drafter. Okay, so this email thread is dedicated to sending out responses to the clients in a professional tone, 
so that it it's, it looks uh, uh, you know it it looks on point and uh, make it human like. Don't use emojis. So you have to give it like a, a huge prompt to kind of train it, and then test it multiple times and make sure that it is the context is set well. And then when you introduce a client to it, right, you have to say that this is the project I'm working on with this client, and this is the outcome that the client is looking for, and this is the uh, the scope of work. So what I do is I upload the PDF, okay, uh, to my Google server, and I copy the PDF of my statement of work, and I use a tool called Link Reader. Okay, so let me actually share my screen once again. That's a good question you asked me, because sometimes I I, I also ask. Uh, Ask it to kind of one sec. See, based on these documents, can you attempt to create a brand voice guideline? Okay, a one pager for BBTI, and these are all the files that the client has sent me. Okay, PDFs. These are all PDFs and documents, and I use the plugin called Link Reader on ChatGPT. And based on it, it created a complete brand voice thing. Okay. And now I said, okay, I want you to be more descriptive. For example, this one. So certainly, and then it, it started creating a brand voice based on that. And again, I course corrected it, right? And it gave me output version number 3.0. And then now, again, after. <laughs> Uh, a little bit more fine tuning, it gave me another version. And then I asked it to expand upon so and so. So maybe I spent like 10 minutes talking to AI to generate something. And then again, finally, it came to a brand voice guideline, which now looks like this. So this is all generated from AI, which after a lot of post corrections, it turned out to something like this, which is like a five page document, including examples. Okay, did I answer your question? Yeah, yes for the question. I mean, like so those link readers, right? Those links are basically some website links. I mean, like content links or voice recordings kind of stuff. No, the uh, voice recordings I have not yet come across, but YouTube links, yes. So uh, as long as the file is, uh, you know, in a in a public server, it okay. can parse through it. So Link Reader passes through documents, PDFs, YouTube videos, and there are so many other uh, plugins as well. You know, like Vox Script and AAA Summarizer. There's so many other you know plugins that you can use for that. So that is one use case. And uh, for the emails and the creating professional documents, you know, statement of works, proposals, uh, you know, estimates. And uh, even some of my friends are using it for testing the bugs, you know, the bug reporting, you know, asking it to parse through an HTML, a piece of lang you know, code and ask it to, you know, uh, add a CSS element to it and things like that so it's it's just crazy i'm not from a development background so i'm sorry i, I cannot i cannot be much of a help on that but then there are some game changing things that's happening on ai in in programming as well Fine. so and uh, you know with the remaining time i think i can quickly take you through a suite a suite of uh, ai tools that i'm using so it's going to be a little more rushed but uh, feel free to stop me if you are not understanding what I'm trying to say. Okay. So, gamma.app. Okay. I'm going to copy and paste all these links for you. Okay. And then I'm going to share it with you. So, gamma.app is really, really good to create briefs, uh, documents, and stuff like that. So, for example, uh, I can do generate for. 
So I can create presentation document or web page. Which one do you want me to create? Web page. Web page. Okay, awesome. So what would you like to create? I'm, I'm going to say uh, landing page for uh, my for a service I am going to offer to let's say Shopify store owners to leverage Google web stories to attract more traffic to their stores okay okay so i'm just not going to do any edits i'm just going to click on continue and i'm going to pick a, a layout okay so i can choose from all these layouts i think this is pretty good do you think it's good or do i need to change it let me change let me look at this okay so this is good and i'm all right just, just click on surprise me okay this is not bad continue and it automatically generates a web page with title description copy how cool is this, guys? All right, so it has finished generating based on my prompt. Isn't this a good first draft, guys? Generated in less than 60 seconds. Yes. Yeah? <laughs> okay. All right, guys, you're not talking. <laughs> I guess you're not impressed. All right. <laughs> Okay, great. So to me, it's a really good first draft. Okay, I, I can go in and start editing it, or I can add more stuff. You know, if I want to, I can delete things. Uh, and you know, I can give it, give it a pricing and stuff. And then once it is done, I can actually export it. Or I can give it to my designer to use, uh, you know, WordPress or any other funnel builders to create this funnel. So as long as the copy is ready and the structure is ready, I think I can use this even to grab a link and start using it as a, you know, an HTML landing page, right? To validate the market. So this is good enough. Sorry. I mean, like one question is that right? This is a generated content. Okay, right? Normally images, right? Images are typically copyrighted. Any images, most of them, not just three. Use because it's yeah, this, this, this a draft. I'm not going to use the same images, right? So I can I can go to any other image creators like generate AI images. You know, like Canva has an AI image generator. Or I can use I can use stock images. Right? So that's fine. This is just a draft for the copy. Okay. So basically the site and the themes and content are something I can use as well. Yes, so well, the main thing is I got the copy that I can start editing it. Yeah, okay. Okay, and then a framework, you know, how, how it looks. So I'm not actually happy with this one. So I'm trying to remove this. Or I can change the focal point. I can actually, yeah, do something else. Okay. It's not surprising me at all. <laughs> okay, so... 
you you definitely need to uh, spend some more time to make it right for you so it, you know it's just a first draft and the other thing i use a lot these days is invideo.io okay which is uh, an ai video creator and uh, i can actually create a youtube shot okay and youtube shot about the power of google web stories for marketers okay and i can use a female a clear american voice show subtitles use i stock normally okay and click on generate video So while it does, maybe I can actually show you something else. So Clips AI is something which you know like helps you to repurpose your content. So let me actually show you. This is one of my podcast. Okay, I'm just going to copy this link URL, YouTube URL, and then paste it here. Okay, and this is going to be a TGL podcast in English. So let it actually. So what it does is it helps you to cut the twenty-five-minute video into short clips, which I can use, which uh, you know, to promote this uh, podcast on on the internet. So maybe it will okay it takes about ten minutes for every hour. So maybe five minutes is what it is. So let's actually come back and use the in video which we used for. You know, creating a YouTube shot. So the audience are marketers. Look and feel. I want it to be crisp and platform is YouTube shots. I'm going to click on continue, and it is going to start creating the magic. So maybe it'll take a few minutes. We'll come back to it. We'll email you once ready. So let's see if it has emailed me yet. Not yet. Okay. So while this AI is <laughs> creating its magic, this is a resource that I use to kind of get myself updated on what's happening in the field of AI. And uh, you can actually, you know, for any use case, you you can come to there is there is an AI for that dot com, and search for for example, um, image. And say images, and it'll, it's going to uh, give me a lot, of, you know, a list of AI apps that I can use for creating AI images. Okay, and I can also look at timeline to see which are the ones which are released like in the past couple of days, right? So on fourth October, resume roasting, roast my resume. So from the name, I can assume that once you upload your resume. It will give you a, a feedback on how to improve your resume, and there is AI for script writing, product growth, news channels, travel packing, video dubbing, optical illusions, audience growth, social media feeds. You know, like you're only limited by your time, actually, not even your talent. <laughs> only if you have enough time to go through all these things and kind of start making use of it, it's you're just going to be golden. Cool. Okay, so I'm just going to close this. Uh, script AI. So this is uh, a tool that uh, some of my friends use to create short scripts for their YouTube shorts or Instagram reels and stuff like that. So once you enter your video title and a short description and click on generate script, it will give you content. For example, let's say how to use uh, Google Web Stories. OK. Focus on marketers and e com store owners as our target audience. Okay. Click on generate script. So 
it is going to take some time again <laughs> nothing is instant okay awesome Okay, so it is giving me a script that I can actually use it uh, with a screen sharing uh, interface. So I don't have to start from scratch, you know, so I can actually take it and I can edit it the way I want and start using or start creating content. Okay, so let's see. Okay, this is still creating. Okay, this is never this slow. Okay, let's see. How How cool is that? It's not bad at all, right? Now I can actually click on edit and I can change the uh, you know the, the text and I can also upload any videos I want or change the videos. Everything is is customizable. And if you have your own screen sharing, you know, like a, a small screen snippet, you can also upload it and or you can also search it on other premium stock images sites. Okay. This is not bad, right? This is really something which, you know, without editing, I can just post it to get some brand awareness, you know, after adding my logo and stuff. So I can also edit the script. I can add more if I want. You know, there's, there's a lot of stuff I can do with this. So very powerful. It gives you 10 minutes of uh, free usage. And beyond that, you have to pay. OK, so this one, let me just come back to see if this is done. OK, so let me so these are the snippets that it is suggesting me that I can use. So let's look at one of the snippets, overcoming mindset challenges in building an online business. OK, so let's play this. Actually, voice is uh, we didn't get the voice. Yeah, so what is, it is suggesting a few clips that it, I can auto repurpose into, and I can just download it and start promoting it. And there is also, uh, you know, ways I can actually repurpose this into a different format for uh, you know stories so we don't use this wide screen and we can just uh, use a very uh, vertical looking uh, dimensions for this so this is very very you know helpful in creating short pieces of content from a long piece of content okay so this is another use case i'm using it and okay Tiny wall is pretty good. You can use it to create AI images. These are some of the images that it has created. So the prompt was man with unicorn. Okay, that is what it created. A tiger Van Gogh painting. Japanese mountain with cherry blossom trees. A beach with mountains with background, digital art, Greg Rutkowski. <laughs> okay, so yeah, this is pretty good. So did you see uh, the image quality depends upon the prompt. Right. So look at the prompt. The Mediterranean villa abandoned, haunted, spooky Halloween, highly detailed digital painting, soft, diffuse light, ultra realistic, extremely detailed 
fantasy intricate oil on canvas, photorealistic, beautiful, dynamic, lighting, fantastic view, hyperrealistic, ultra HD. <laughs> you know, and you also can use chat CPT to create a prompt for using for image generation. That's like the next level stuff. Cool, right? <laughs> and then there is Photor. Again, Photor is really good for neon uh, styled, uh, you know, images like this. I absolutely love the kind of photos it generates. And then FreePick. FreePick is a very popular uh, stock image collaborate. I mean, uh, aggregator. And then you can use it for applying styles like 3D painting, you know, 3D art, and you can actually uh, ask it to create photo realistic Apple. We are Okay, so I need to log in, I think. And it'll generate it. Okay, and even Canva has something really good. It also has started uh, doing video generations as well. So it's called magic media. Okay. So I can go to video. Okay. Maybe it is not available to me yet. But images, same thing. Uh, Apple, we are gadget of the future. Okay, let's see what it generates. And free pick, I think, I think it lost my prompt, <laughs> but it's okay. Since we're running short of time, I'll let you to use it yourself. Not bad at all, right? Like, you know, this is really good stuff. So I can use these. No, I mean, like, is it free commercially also? Uh, I'm using a, I'm using a paid version of Canva, but it, it should be free for at least you know, a few generations maybe, but it's really good. You know, I kind of, you know, since I generated through AI, uh, I can actually say that <laughs> uh, the image is mine. Yeah, we could do because uh, it's really good. But it's not free for commercial use, right? It's more of a play thing. That's the thing. Because for a few things, right, in this stage, we might want to use a few images. But uh, my point is like, you no. Know, uh, of course, you know, like app. If if somebody is going to, uh, you know, sue you, it's going to be Apple. Nobody else. Okay, but is there any kind of a competitor? I mean, like the images, it can be generated. But is there somewhere in these sites, right? They might actually show like the what are the terms and conditions for using those images, right? Generated content. Text is a different one. Nobody will. Yeah, yeah. So maybe be best to ask. Uh, you know, like a, a legal team to, you know, use the web for the verbiage. But for me, you know, like from what, what I have known, uh, the AI images does not need uh, require like a permission or, you know, like anything like that. So you can use it without getting into trouble. Only way that you can get in trouble is by using logos of other companies without permission. Yeah, so that's, that's something which uh, we need to do. And uh, I'm sure that you know Synthesia. So you can write a prompt and it creates a, an avatar. And then, you know, it's like uh, if you want to welcome people to your website, uh, you don't have to hire a spokesperson to do it. You can con convert your text into videos and create avatars like this with very natural sounding tone and very human like expressions and emotions. So this used to be like. You know, you can see this, you know, like you, have, you would have seen this character many, many places. Uh, and it's by Synthesia. And now they have a lot more avatars that are available. So people can't distinguish that uh, you're using, you know, the same avatar for every video that you generate. So this is a really good tool to bookmark. And how one is also used for AI, gen you know, uh, AI generated videos. And what it does is it creates like uh, an explainer video, like with this, with the background and text in it. Uh, and how I'm using Loom 
is to do asynchronous standups with clients. So these days we don't do much of uh, weekly client calls. Uh, instead of that, I use Loom and I have this desktop application, which once I start recording. Okay. So yeah, wait for it. So this is a quick video walkthrough uh, to explain to my uh, members in the community, in the WordPress community, the power of AI and how to use video. And I'm going to use it to say how I'm using Loom AI features for recording a screen shared content without needing any meetings. Uh, weekly meetings, so we don't have to work in uh, unnecessary hours and still get work done and collaborate with team members. Thank you. Okay, so now what it does is it automatically creates the title for my present for, for my asynchronous meeting. Okay, and it has I have I've added a few ers and ums in between wantedly. Okay, it, the fill, that's, how, that's called the filler words. So it automatically removes fillers and it also removes silences. So if there is any awkward silences in between, it removes silences, it removes the filler words, and it also creates tasks for suggested viewers. <laughs> so which I, I really like and I, really, I, I use it a lot. I use a lot of Loom too on a daily basis to give reviews to my teams and to conduct asynchronous standups with clients and stuff. And I use spoke.app to record my calls. So let me go to my dashboard and uncategorize spoke. So, you know, like we use spoke for uh, recording my Zoom calls and uh, my Google Meet meetings. And what it does is it automatically generates a transcript of the meeting notes. So if I have to come in and uh, look for the action items, I just have to come here and add a spoke, say action items for Praveena. OK. I just have to press Enter, and it is going to read through the entire uh, you know, conversation, and it only extracts information that pertains to Praveena. Got it? So this is how we can actually uh, make sense of the entire meeting. So what I do is I ask my team members to uh, go through the action items instead of watching the entire video of one hour. So whenever we do have strategy calls and things like that, uh, you know, only the action items can be separated from this. And when you click on this, it will also play the context. Okay, so I don't know why. Okay. 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 Cool. And I'm also using AI on my own website. It's called Growth Recipes. And this is one of the recipe that is uh, here. And it's about leveraging co-marketing opportunities. So if I have to create uh, you know, a recipe, you just have to come here. And it, it's called Growth AI. And it understands which page you're on. OK. And I can just ask it, can you generate an email outreach template for reaching out to e-com store owners to become our uh, co-marketing partner to promote the testimonial collection app. I am building.
Okay. Yes, I am building an app and want to uh, collaborate with potential co-marketing partners to get the word out. Okay, so first it creates this recipe, which is it is taking this recipe and then uh, you know creating like a custom thing that I can use based on my use case, and then now I can ask now create an outreach email. Okay, so now it has made my life easier by helping me to take this recipe and start taking action on top of that. So collaboration opportunity, boost your testimonials with app name. Uh, I hope this email finds you well. My name is blah, blah, blah. I am reaching out to you on behalf of the app name. Okay. And I want to explore a potential collaboration opportunity that will benefit both of our businesses. Okay. So these are the options. And I can now take this and make it my own. So I think we are almost at the uh, the stop time. And a uh, couple of things which I wanted to show quickly before moving forward. Like I have, I, I also use this for creating, you know, like for example, if I want to respond to a post. So I can actually go comment. And I want to respond to this so that uh, I can get in touch with the creator of this post. For example, let me uh, let's say that I want to do business with Shrikant. So instead of just calling him up and saying, "Hey, this is RK, and do you have any uh, needs to build funnels?" Blah blah blah. You know, I can help. Instead of that, first I build familiarity. How do I build familiarity by posting on their comment, posting on their posts, and being visible in their community so that. When I reach out to them, I can say, hey, I'm the RK that used to, you know, that post on your thing. Or when, 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 I, when I send him an email, he will instantly recognize that, okay, this is the guy that, you know, used to post and engage in my uh, wall and stuff, right? So I can just click on positive reply here, and it automatically generates a reply. The app that I'm using for this is called Merlin. It's a free app uh, on Chrome, I think, you know, Chrome extension. So every day you can use it for 50 prompts, you know, like it, it, it's really, really good. So, and I would just remove all these hashtags because it doesn't make sense. And I click on post, that's it. The same way I can use it for Twitter as well. So I use Merlin and I generate a reply. I, I remove my hashtag because it doesn't make sense. And if if it looks good, I reply. Otherwise, I'll, I'll make some edits. So this is to build familiarity with people that we want to do business with or we want to pull up, you know, potentially collaborate with. OK, with that, I'm just going to stop sharing my screen and starting some questions. OK. Guys, any questions? OK, uh, there is a question in the messages uh, about the marketing session of A. Hey, can you please check? Yes. Oh, OK, OK. There's been a lot of questions. No sound. When did I? When did the sound go? I think uh, when you were uh, making a what to say, uh, yeah, you were, uh, the video was shared. Ah, the loom video. Oh, ah, yeah, loom video. Podcast. Not loom video oh, before that. Okay. Yeah, you were, uh, podcast. You were, a podcast. I mean, you were you were uh, uh, memories. Okay, okay, okay. All right. I, I okay. I, I'm sorry that happened. I don't know why. Okay. 
can we use uh, tracking code here? What tracking code was that, uh, Anthony? Uh, okay, I think it was on that HTML code, right? You had created an HTML page uh, for the service. So oh. I think oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Right. For the Gamma app, right? Yeah, it, it was related to the Gamma app. Yeah, okay, okay. No, I, I don't, you know, you should not be using that uh, for tracking purposes because it is just a, a quick landing page generator. So you need to use that copy, you know, and then create your own on WordPress or, you know, other funnel builders or page builders and apply your tracking code there. Okay. And any tool currently available for creating campaign for Meta and Google? Oh, there are tons of it. You go to appsumo.com and you can see a lot of tools uh, on lifetime deals to create campaigns on Meta and Google. All AI generated, you know, they the AI generates your ad copy, you know, it creates multiple, uh, you know, split test friendly uh, versions and uh, generates keywords for you and creates audiences for you. So there's a lot of stuff, it, you know, uh, available for creating campaigns, ad campaigns. And Anthony, it looks like all the questions were from Anthony and unfortunately he left. Can you go through marketing section of AI? It's enough. Again, I don't have a context. Marketing section? I think he's asking about some tools that can be used for marketing, like for digital marketers. You like strategy think, creation and stuff? I think that is a context because he already asked about the creating campaign, right? So right, right, right. right. I think his context was to yeah, okay. All right. So I mean I mainly use uh chat GPT to uh, brainstorm some ideas for marketing. So I use a concept called A3R3. Uh, it's a it's a it's called a pirate metric because it when you try to say A3R3, it's it's it sounds like R, right? So that's a pirate sound. Uh, so, you know, it, it, it stands for awareness, acquisition, activation, uh, revenue, retention, and referral. So I trained the AI on this A3R3 funnel framework, and then I ask it to generate the tactics and strategy for a client based on the, the A3R3 framework, and it generates the entire, you know, uh, things on how we can right from awareness to retention to referrals what are the campaigns we need to run in order to achieve the goals of each stage of the funnel so that's a short answer for that in case if anyone's wondering okay any other questions prashita was it helpful Uh, yes, yes, uh, RK, it was helpful. Um, actually, I'm wondering uh, what are your favorite free uh, AI tools that you like the most? Well, uh, you know, so the, the ones that I really like uh, are the ones that I usually upgrade to, a, a, you know, a paid version because it gives a lot of value. Okay. Uh, but uh, I actually started with uh, Chat GPT. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, when the GPT came, but then before that, I used to use Jasper a lot. Jasper, but, okay. uh, yeah, Jasper AI, okay. and before that, I used to use Copy AI a lot. Uh, but then that's also, I think, we cannot use much. It, yeah, that's no, a it, limitation it, for Copy AI. Whatever limitation it uh, it gives you, it still is good. Um, true. You know, so most of the, uh, the the free AI tools that I use these days are for image generation. Uh, mm -hmm. like free pick and uh, the places because I don't need it very often. Yeah. So I only use it whenever required. Okay. Now onwards, I'll, I'll not be using free pick or anything else because I can do it all inside Canva, mm -hmm. which I'm already paying and gives me a lot of uh, premium generations. Okay. Yeah. You know? So I used to use mid journey a lot before. Okay. But then I don't use mid journey anymore because it's like you, you, you need to install discard a thing and then you have to wait for the generations to happen and then to keep oh. track of it and all that crap. But then, no, I don't, I don't use mid journey anymore. Mm. I use the, uh, you know, I think I'm going to use Canva from now onwards. 
So my advice is that whichever tool you really like, mm -hmm. uh, it gives you value. Consider up upgrading it so that you are supporting the creators as well. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Uh, Jinto, was it helpful in the marketing side of things? Prajosh, any questions? Yeah, okay. Uh, it's it's a great session. Okay, a lot of eye-opening uh, points are there. So uh, my question is, you now, uh, which tool you you do you recommend to that we can? It's helpful for a programmer, for programming side. Yeah, that that's what I told you, right? Like I'm since I I am not a programmer. Uh, okay. Nothing comes to my mind, but uh, I'll be happy to uh, share with you some. Uh, you know, like for example, for if it's bug bugs and things, you can still use ChatGPT quite a lot. Okay. So that yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. your team your team members can focus more on uh, you know strategic decision making stuff and work less and less on doing very mundane things that AI can do now. And uh, if you have uh, you know like a really good coder, you can increase the productivity multiple times instead of having to hire more and more. Okay. People. So train train your team on using AI. It's very very good. And if you're into uh, building products, right? There are apps. Yeah. With just when you enter the prompt of what you want the app to. Okay. Create, the AI generates the entire code for you. You know all the modules, like the, okay. user, the the login module, you know the dashboard module, you know the function functionality module, the for example attendance tracking, leave tracking, you know. Uh, uh, claims, uh, HR policy, everything okay. it, it creates from scratch and gives you. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the app's name I forget, but I can, I can share that on the WhatsApp group once you invite me. Okay. Okay. Please. Yeah. So, you, so you are using all all of this tool in your daily life, no? Yes. Daily activities. So all the tools that I'm I shared, uh, you know, on this in this session, are the ones that okay. I use on a daily basis. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, maybe I will also try to use it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. No problem. After long time. So, are you planning to come Calicut next week? So we have another coffee meetup piece. I know. Okay. I know. But no. No. I. I can't, no. <laughs> yeah. But okay, I. No I can, I'll definitely inform you. Uh, I may be. Okay. I may be coming for uh, Bridget's uh, daughter's wedding. Ah. Okay. 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 Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, we will meet then. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, any other questions? Sachit, uh, what was the overall? Yeah, it was really good, RK. Thank you. Uh, it was like there are a lot of tools and I wanted to, you know, play around with that. Yeah, especially the YouTube video generation tool. Like, uh, I think we can generate some videos and put it on YouTube and yeah. use it for monetization, right? Yes. Absolutely. Let me quickly copy the links to join the WhatsApp chat because I don't think I am a part of. Yeah, okay. okay. I I send the links on the chat. So yes. If uh, if anyone else doesn't doesn't know join the channel, you can use that link. Yes. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. Okay. So you you already finished. Finished? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I finished yeah, the presentation. Yeah, okay. Q &A. Oh, okay. You had another one community in Kochi or whatever? Uh, there yeah, was... we have community, so I will share the link. Okay, see right now, is there anything happening after this or no? Yeah, we, uh, you can uh, be part of our WhatsApp group. Uh, we will be, uh, I mean, regularly conducting sessions uh, related to, mainly related to business. Okay. Yeah, I joined a bit late, so you know I saw two meetups today. Okay. One, okay. Uh, one at uh, four thirty. I mean, sorry, five five thirty and one at six thirty. I think. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, uh, you can part of the community, so you will be get updated uh, when we uh, call for meetups like this. Yeah, yeah sure. it will be updated in Kerala group. I already shared that link. You can join the Kerala. Okay. So it is basically from. Yep. Are you from uh, Kochi or Chennai? 
Uh, I am Chennai right now, but it's okay. Okay. Okay, fine. Uh, you have any recordings? Things? Any recordings or anything is there or no? Uh, we have recorded this session and we will be sharing it with you. I mean, okay. in the and, uh, and you are, are you anybody developing any tools or just using it? How is it? Uh, normally, uh, all of us are just, uh, I mean, uh, Writing a, a tool is not easy, so all of us are uh, users. Okay. So they, they could be people who are developing AI tools as well, uh, but mostly uh, the community is of freelancers uh, who are already doing a job and mm -hmm. developers and marketers, people running marketing agencies and stuff. Uh, okay, there is a question in, sorry for the interruption, there yes. is a question in the chat yeah. box. Legal or PR, copyright issue to be aware of when using generative AI or create content on design or designs. Uh, as long as you uh, have a disclaimer on your website that you are, uh, you know, you may be using uh, you know, uh, AI generated uh, images, you know, uh, and the images that you see on the website are not real or something like that is good in the ethical standpoint uh, but i don't see anybody doing that much so since the generative ai is still very uh, at nascent stages i think uh, more and more laws are going to come to uh, standardize the use of generation generative ai and these days a lot of people are using ai to morph the face of the people and the body of somebody else like politicians and actors and things like that uh, they definitely will, you know, come a time when you can't uh, differentiate between a real person and an AI-generated person. Okay, right now you can you can differentiate. There is a little bit of a, you know, uh, the, the lag or something. You know, you can easily make out. But you know, in future it's going to be a lot of new implications of AI. So uh, I'm not uh, authorized or I'm not expert in the legal matters. Or the copyright issues it's better to consult with a, a legal team for that uh, or go to websites and you know use google to get some information about that uh, but as long as i know like uh, an ethical standpoint it's better to disclaim you know or, or add a disclaimer if you're using heavy you know ai generations yeah see what happens today is you know the generative AI, you know whatever these tools you know, they have an ethical issue already, starting from the open AI. You know, there are many, you know, book authors and, you know, I mean, people who are content creators, you know, they have already filed a lawsuit against all this because most of their things are public today. And they're, you know, and so it's a big issue, actually, you know, after some time, probably, you know, probably in a few months, every country will uh, put restrictions, you know, by how governance rules around, you know, this type of things. So actually for, since you people are developers, right? I mean, like uh, designers, right? Web designers and all? WordPress it designers? Will be mixed. It, it will be mixed, yes. Uh, there are developers, uh, developers, uh, programmer, I mean, developers as there, but designers as the content writers as there. So okay. it's and in the oh. in the in the you know if you are uh, creating a website right when you are creating a website you know you are actually using the tool and generating something and then uh, adding that content in the website or whether you are actually dynamically getting it how is it it depends upon the uh, it depends upon the uh, purpose. i mean what the actual website is uh, there are many templates uh, 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 I mean, RK, uh, it's, in this section itself, RK has shown an app called Gamma app uh, to create a template, HTML template you know, for the website. So, okay, so depends. You know, my question is, uh, you know, suppose, okay, I'm, a, I'm going to a website, okay, and then I go every day, you know, and then I, you know, and I have actually, I like certain preferences in the website, right? And so, uh, you know, suppose if I have a, you know, in the back end, if I am giving you an algorithm, one style, can you like dynamically change it, that website? Because every day, can I see a different website based on my, you know, in, you know, what you call personal, uh, 
uh, insights yeah, and whatever. Personalization, uh, you know, AI plays a huge role, but then it does not understand context unless you actually give it the sources, data sources. So when you are actually, you see, if you have a program which tracks where I'm clicking, mm -hmm. right? Can I can I get a kind of uh, uh, you know because I can predict right what the personal what what is what do I like or the customers like right uh, every day based on what yeah, he yeah. clicks what he does. so based yeah. on that can I have a no, different you content all day? No. you you don't need AI for that if that is the use case you don't need AI for that this has no, been there the... even, even before that uh, you know the AI was prominent because you know what you can do is uh, you can use there are a lot of personalization tools available right now uh, you know so you can use it to kind of click create tracking metric on whether if, if people are watching a certain kind of content or whether they're clicking on certain links all the time you can actually tag that user with a particular segmentation tag and then when you you know you can communicate to them more on that it's already happening right like before even ai uh, youtube right for example my youtube content you know it shows all uh, the depending upon the uh, the videos i watch it gives me more of that personalized content it is not ai actually yeah that is... yeah but that is you know yeah that is there suppose if i have 1000 users you know uh, using a website, a website and then uh, can i see 1000 websites you know i mean like 1000 people should be seeing 1000 different styles that much, that's what I'm know. saying. Like it's dynamic. That YouTube is already doing it. Instagram is already doing it, and uh, I don't think those are AI. Those are mostly, you know, uh, big data. Uh, yeah, that will are. be based on that will be based on the coding. Uh, so you have to make some patterns. Uh, I mean, for example, uh, we can change the background. Uh, we can uh, we can customize the widgets. So it's possible, uh, but uh, it's uh, there is no specific tool for that. You have to do it. I mean, by coding. That is my understanding. Yeah, I think there is one uh, company in China, you know China. I think I you know maybe a two three years back I was actually going over that actually. So what they do is, you know, the mobile app, right? In the mobile app, uh, whatever they are uh, see, we are seeing the mobile apps, right? That apps they change. You know, every day they change. For every customer they change. So they have a kind of a million kind of combinations. And they are using AI, uh, under, you know, underlying AI, not generative AI, probably. And so, two of three years back, there was one company AI. become very popular. Yeah, so, yeah. But uh, this yeah. session was mainly for the generative AI purposes, you know. AI um, as a as a big, you know, thing, uh, you know, like uh, that. That's beyond the my realm of understanding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now, you yeah. know, can we see? I am a basically a you know data person, and I can, uh, you know, develop some you know, algorithm or whatever based on the generative AI, which can be used for certain things, right? So if you, you know, as a developer, uh, you know, based on what is existing, right, in the website or whatever, if you tell certain requirements, you know, which will be good if you gen use this instead of, you know, going via ChatGPT or DALI or some other okay. generative tools, okay. no? Yeah, yeah. So I, I'll definitely uh, look, look for... Uh personalization tools using ai and yes. i will send a uh, i'll send across a list yes okay so we okay. can uh, yeah try to do something yes you have actually